today we are going to look at a heat conduction problem and we are going to use Fourier's law of heat conduction to solve this problem and this is going to be a very simple problem that's going to get us started on how to use Fourier's law for uh, solving a typical heat conduction problem so without further ado let's hit the ground running so this is the problem we have so it says that we have a square computer chip made of silicon and it has a width of 5 millimeters so I'm going to mark that it also says it has a thickness of 1 millimeters it also says the chip is mounted in a substrate such that its side and back surfaces are insulated so I'm going to mark this word so it says but the front surface is exposed to a coolant okay we are going to see if that information is relevant and it also says if forward heat is being dissipated so forward heat is actually going somewhere and we are going to see it so the heat is dissipated in the circuits mounted to the back of surface uh, or back surface of the chip then what would be the steady temperature difference this word is very important the steady temperature difference uh, between the back surface and the front surface of the chip and the problem also gives us the thermal conductivity value of the chip material that is silicon and it says that it's 150 watts per meter Kelvin okay so that's probably enough information so we know the thermal conductivity value here and we also know that this is a square chip and this is going to come in very handy so let's solve this problem we are going to draw the chip it's a square computer chip so try to draw it as closely as I can this is roughly a square computer chip and its width is 5 millimeters since it's a square chip all of its sides all of them are 5 millimeters so these are 5 and this side is also 5 and we know the thickness is this one this thickness would be one millimeters okay so now let's see what is the given data and write them here so we know the surface area so this area I'm marking it with green I know this area and this area would be I'm going to say a subscript s be 5 into 5 or 25 millimeter squared I also know the thickness which is L equals 1 millimeter so I'm calling this L but in some notation people often use a small letter T but in order to keep with my notations I'm going to use L we are also given the amount of heat that has been transferred so we write it with Q because 4 watts okay so notice that the units are not consistent so some of them are in SI units and some of them are uh, not in a standard SI units such as millimeters so we are going to take into account that later let's understand the area so we know for Fourier's law to be applicable we need to know the cross-sectional area so essentially we have to cut this chip along this plane that kind of sort of goes through the middle of the chip but since it's a rectangular chip and it also says in the problem that it's a square chip so it's a valid assumption that means the surface area and the cross-sectional area are actually the same so they're both 25 millimeters square so now we have the information we need uh, to find out what is asked in the question so what has been asked in the question it says that we have to find out the temperature difference between the front and the back surface so we are calling this surface the front surface and we're calling this surface that is below this uh, chip the back surface so we have to find the temperature difference delta T uh, between these two surfaces right so in order to use Fourier's law we have to see that if if we can make good assumptions that are consistent with Fourier's law 
so we are going to write out our assumptions so you know for Fourier's law to be applicable we have to have a steady state problem so we are going to assume that we have a steady state condition and for this problem it's actually true because the problem says that what's the steady temperature difference between the back surface and the front surface so we know yes we have to solve this problem when the chip is operating at a steady state and a steady state means that when time is changing but there is no change in a particular parameter so in this case with time the temperature difference does not vary so if you uh, like make a plot with t and if you start plotting the numbers then with time initially you might have some change but after a certain time it should not change so essentially this is where you have steady state so that should be the case for this problem and we want to find what's the temperature difference there we have to make another assumption for Fourier's law to be applicable we have to assume that this is a one-dimensional heat transfer problem so essentially heat is being transferred from either the from top to bottom so this way or from bottom to up this way so since the problem says the that heat is actually being dissipated uh, to the circuits mounted to the back of the surface so from that we can actually say yes heat is actually being transferred from top to bottom so from the front to the back in this uh, image that I have drawn so we can make this assumption that yes heat transfer is 1D and also the problem says that the side and back surfaces are insulated so it is probably uh, more information than necessary because if we know that the thickness is very small so it's only one millimeter so that means this area I'm marking with the black uh, color so this area is actually very small so it's only one times five so it's five millimeters squared which is much less compared to the top area and we know for heat to be transferred the more area you have the more heat is going to be transferred perpendicular to that direction so we know in because of this smaller area it actually has to sort of flow from the front to the back and this is why this one dimensional heat transfer assumption actually works in this case but uh, in practice it might uh, heat is actually always transferred in all the directions but that amount that is being transferred to the other directions are much negligible so you always have to keep that in mind so we have to make some more assumptions so another assumption would be that heat is being dissipated uniformly so uniform heat dissipation we also have to make assumption that the material is itself uniform and I'm going to explain in a moment why we also have to make an assumption that we have the thermal conductivity which is constant so this k value we have that is known to us which is 150 so this k value has to be a constant it does not change with time because if it changes with time then we have a problem we cannot use Fourier's law if it changes with temperature which is the real case in most materials then again we cannot use Fourier's law it can change the direction in the material and again we will not be able to use Fourier's law in the simple form if it's in the direction so that's why it's a very important assumption we have to make so now we know everything we made our assumptions and we are ready to uh, solve the problem so we have to find delta t so we are going to write from Fourier's law i'm going to write q equals k a delta t or L uh, I have to correct a mistake of mine so I have to make this large Q a small Q to keep my notations consistent so now we are going to write Q equals K times A times delta T over L which is given from Fourier's law of heat conduction so from this we can write after changing size we can write delta T 
equals q l over k times a and now we're going to put in all these values so we're going to write 4 watts times 1 millimeter so we have to divide it by a thousand so now it's in meters then we're going to write 150 watts per meter kelvin times 25 but it's in millimeter squared so we're going to divide it by 10 to the power 6 which is a unit function factor and that would make it in meter squared and we are going to cross out some units and we will have ultimately delta t equals 1.06 kelvin or you can round it up and say it's 1.1 kelvin and since it's a temperature difference we can actually say it's 1.1 degrees celsius so to better see it can to take the skin up or a bit and this is our final answer so what does this mean so if you operate this chip under steady state condition that would mean that the temperature difference between this top and bottom or front and back surface would be 1.1 degree celsius if it dissipates forward of heat to the circuit that is mounted below this back so essentially if this is the substrate that's the amount of heat that's going to be dissipated and the temperature difference between the front and back surface would be 1.1 degree celsius